Okay, begin. <clears throat> Hello everyone, my name is Sandeep and I am introducing you to my group members Soumya, Sandeep and Ayurna. So before coming on to topic, I just want to tell you something. In childhood, uh, I was told that uh, you should always focus on quality rather than quantity. So I think I am following this throughout my life and I will be following in future. But I just didn't think that uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna use this word in labs mostly every day. So we were like uh, if uh, we were used to we used to talk like if we're gonna do this, we're gonna have uh, more better quality biodiesel. If we're gonna use this, use this, we're gonna have better results. But uh, the the thing was we used use cooking oil to make biodiesel. But what we did uh, differently was we tried to manage FFA in it. So less FFA means uh, better efficient biodiesel. So better efficient biodiesel means its, it's uh, quality has been improved and uh, it's gonna be more environmental friendly, no carbon emissions, and it's gonna be clean energy, and uh, it's gonna be clean energy and. Uh, I think it has a very big impact in future. So we did a certain method to achieve what we achieve it, and uh, my uh, friend will say it. Thank you. So for managing free fatty acid content in used cooking oil, we needed to know like how much amount of free fatty acids were present in that oil. And for that, we were planning to use GC column, but unfortunately we didn't have in our college. And because of these, this reason, we were planning, we were planning to use acid-based titration. And for that, we did first of all blank titration. And by this way, we got to know like how much amount of per percent, uh, how much amount of free fatty acids were present in that oil. And you can you can see that like around 3.3 percentage was 3.3 uh, percentage FFA content was present in uh, used cooking oil. So it was very high when we uh, searched on Google and we we, uh, we saw some literature review. We got to know that around uh, less than 0.7 percentage of free fatty acid content was good for the uh, for feedstock of uh, biodiesel production and uh, uh, we have 3.3 percentage so we got to know that we have to do something and for that we did acidification uh, for acidification we have to use we needed to use oil which was our sample three times of alcohol and one to two one or two percentage of h2so4 in this reaction h2so4 act as a catalyst during that time uh, margaret suggested to use different concentration of uh, h2so4 and make a comparative studies she also suggested that the, like you can use one to ten percentage of H2SO4, but we had less of ten, and because of that reason, we could we 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 perform <coughs> one to five percentage of H2SO4 for esterification. So initially, when we performed uh, our practical, we got results for one percentage and two percentage of H2SO4 in esterification. But uh, we didn't get results for 3, 4 and 5 percentage of H2SO4 when we performed acidification. What was the reason behind that? We will discuss it, la discuss it later. But uh, we did 1 percentage and 2 percentage of uh, H2SO4 and we did uh, duplicates and triplicates for that. So here you can see that uh, when we used 1 percentage, 1 percentage of H2SO4, we got around 1.3 or 1.4 percentage of yield which was early, earlier it was 3.3 so we, re, re, we managed free fatty acid content uh, by esterification even we, when we used 2 percentage of H2SO4 we got this results so from esterification we got to know that uh, we, need, we, need, we needed to do something uh, else for making more, more uh, efficient biodiesel uh, more efficient product and for that we did as trans esterification of uh, esterified oil for that our initial plan was to use NOH and KOH both as a catalyst in that in that reaction but uh, when we uh, used uh, 
literature we got to know that uh, we will get same result for both catalysts and because of this reason we only perform uh, uh, our uh, trans esterification with NOH and we did duplicates and triplicates for trans esterification and after that we got like 0. Uh, 0.1% is in trial 1, 0.3% in trial 2, and 0.3% is in trial 3. So I can say that we reduce a significant amount of free fatty acid in uh, used cooking oil. Even when we use 2% of H2SO4, we reduce uh, near, nearly 0.3. So earlier it was 3.3, and now we got 0.3. So we are on, we were on track. So after that, even you can see that uh, earlier. Uh, yeah, the, the oil uh, like this, but we got this amount of oil, uh, this clear uh, oil. So after that, uh, we did a GC analysis and luckily we got a standard graph. So we compare our results and we got our results. Hi, so now I want to uh, tell you that what are the statistical uh, results we got with whole our study. So what we did, first of all, we decided to do one way ANOVA that all the, uh, we need to check that do we proceed with a comparative study or not. So for that, first of all, we did the one way an, uh, analysis uh, variance and for that, uh, we, uh, uh, we compared the values of F value which we got from the results and which are critical values. So as you see that it is already there in the slide that 238 uh, is the actual value what we got from our uh, analysis result but in actual the critical value should be 4.07 to accept that uh, to accept the null hypothesis. So for that from there we get to know that we should proceed with the alternative hypothesis and we should go with the two key analysis or two key comparative study. Another thing which also there, it is a p-value. We did it for the 95% confidence interval and for that the value should be ma uh, more than that of 0.05% and it is already shown in that the p-value is 0.0. .0. From there also we get the idea that we should go with the alternative hypothesis and we should reject the null hypothesis. So after that what we did, we did the 2 key analysis that it is all uh, it is shown over there and we came to know that there are basically uh, what we got, we got the 3 results of that A, B and 3, uh, A, B and C categories we got and from there uh, we came to know that uh, as already mentioned as a summit <coughs> that we need to do uh, the values were 1.5 or near about 1.7 percent so we need to reduce that FFA value much more. So for that we proceed with the trans esterification and that thing also justified with the statistical analysis as well as it is shown that the values for the um, uh, for the trans esterified 2% and 1% as 2 so for containing sample is also showing the same results. So it is necessary to proceed with the 2% uh, uh, and 1% trans esterification as well and we need to do that and with the interval plot it is also uh, uh, visible from that plot that uh, the values for the uh, transesterified oil are very less in comparison to that of uh, uh, and it is coming under that optimum value which was 0.7 and we need to get the feedstock till at 0.7 percentage or less than that and it is evident uh, it is evident from the transesterified oil is having those value and not the esterified oil so Further, we did the GC analysis of our sample as well and we took the reference from the COVID, uh, COVID analysis as well and we want to thank you for that that she shared her data with us as she made the biodiesel from the fresh oil and we did it with the used cooking oil. So we need some standard that what uh, we are doing that is uh, that is correct or incorrect as uh, these pictures are not that clear the reason is that there was some uh, error in the uh, operator, so we use the picture. She, uh, Margaret, shared the pictures with us. So as it is shown that the GC uh, results for the fresh oil, we got uh, she got the peak at 67% peak area, and the retention retention time was 5.0. Uh, and we, if we talk about our samples, then we got that results at 5.1, which is near about that. So we can say that the what we made, it was good feedstock because we got the result near about that. And other thing was that 
uh, that 67% uh, peak area she got but ours was only 55% and that could be the possibility that there are some other um, sorry there are some other so, uh, components present in the used cooking oil which we need to uh, remove it but uh, that is the next step that if anyone would proceed with our results they can do that uh, we were not having that time that we should know that what type of components were there and what we need to do to treat those components so maybe those uh, little bit other disturbance are due to that components present in that and that could be possible uh, in the future that if anyone would like to proceed with those uh, with the studies they can check it that what are the components how to treat that and how to make it more uh, more efficient oil these are the things and further there are some errors and some challenges which we face during the whole journey which Ayana can tell us so uh our goal of reducing the free fatty acid by the process of esterification and transesterification was carried out and there were many trials and errors that we have did during our experiment. The first one was change in condenser. Firstly, we use a reflex condenser instead of a simple condenser. But when we uh, do with our experiment, we find that reflex condenser is not necessary to do this esterification because esterification reaction do not require the continuous reflection, reflexing of the sample. So, and uh, simple condenser is much more convenient and it is a straightforward design and it is easier to use. So we change the reflex condenser to simple condenser. Next one is the absence of reaction. As they said, our primary aim was to use 1 to 10 percentage of sulfuric acid and compare the yield that is obtained uh, during the process. But we changed it into 1 to 5 percentage due to the time limit. And when we do the reaction, we find that at 3, 4 and 5 percentage of H2SO4 catalyst, we got uh, the uh, reaction was not carrying forward due to the presence of sulfonate ion. Uh, because the sulfuric acid <coughs> is reacting with the alcohol instead of catalyzing the reaction to produce the biodiesel. So uh, the 3, 4 and 5 percentage do not uh, produce any result and it was an absence of reaction. Uh, the next one was reduced yield. There is a decreased yield that is we used 50 ml of alcohol and we got 8.36 percentage yield. Uh, it is an average value. So the yield is very less it is because of many properties like it can be because of the immunities present in the oil because it is a restaurant waste which is already uh, processed during the cooking so it can include impurities degradative or agents polymers or any other substance so uh, it can affect the yield uh, which can be uh, removed by filtration if we filter the oil from the primary stage itself also the amount of alcohol that we use can also influence the uh, yield that is when we used 50 ml of alcohol it was done by an error but we got 0.1279 percentage of fatty acid but we uh, reduce our alcohol to 25 ml we got uh, free fatty acid content of 0.3592 which is higher than 50 ml alcohol and uh, after our experiment the question is what to do next we have already uh, made biodiesel by reducing the free fatty acid content but the next step is the analysis first one is the quality assessment as already discussed we have already done gc analysis but there are some drawbacks in gc like we cannot identify all the components which is present in the biodiesel because it contains impurities because it's a used cooking oil so another method i would suggest is nmr spectroscopy which is nuclear uh, magnetic resonance spectroscopy where we can identify, quantify and monitor the entire process like after transesterification we can monitor, after purification, after storage and also after the thermal treatment we can do the NMR spectroscopy and analyze each component. Next one is the physical property evaluation. There are a lot of physical properties that can be evaluated like viscosity, calorimetry and everything. Like viscosity can be analyzed using redwood viscometer, hydrometer can be used to analyze the density and ignition test can be used to identify the quality and uh, there are other methods as well. 
uh, along with that, there are different standards that is given by American Standard Testing and Material. So uh, there is a legal definition given to biodiesel based on these standards, which I have given in the reference if anyone want to refer. So ASTM standards must, must be met for all the biodiesel that is produced and which is used in vehicles as a petroleum biodiesel blend. So uh, we have to uh, find if this biodiesel met these ASTM standards which is given for like flash points and everything. And uh, after all these, we have to conclude if this UCO that is the restaurant grease or waste produced in this restaurant is a good feed stock. So the answer will be given by C. So the question I will ask is, was it a good feed stock? I can say it wasn't. We made it good. We used it and we used it to create, uh, to make biodiesel. And uh, I think we achieved results. And uh, it was a long way actually from 3.3% uh, FFA to 0.3%. We can say probably we did it. We made it. And uh, I think we also paved the road for upcoming students. They can achieve in even more better results in future, but we actually made it. And uh, I think biodiesel has huge future. And uh, if I'm gonna talk about its uh, its uh, benefits, uh, it's uh, because it's environmental friendly, and also it uh, creates a more efficient uh, engine. And I think I am ready to drive green. Are you? <laughs> yes. These are the all references from where we took all the information and we modify it according to our circumstances that how we can do that. And this is a course that applied lab skills and we did it. Thank you.